All right, gang, sounds like we're going to be doing cardiac monitoring now. And in order to do cardiac output monitoring, you need the Vigileo. So that's what this big purple box is. You can find it in the ICU storage room. I am here to walk you through how to set one of these up since pretty much no one's done that before. So here we go. Inside the box, you're going to have some important things. I'll set this off to the side. First off, power cable. Uh, the Vigileo does have a battery, but you're still going to have to have it plugged in pretty much all the time for it to run. So power the Vigileo itself. All this is is a fancy calculator. It just takes the information that comes from the flow track tubing, which is essentially art line tubing. It takes that information, runs it through a calculator, gives you certain numbers. We'll walk through that later today. But that's those two pieces. The, um, <clears throat> the box also includes in it some cards. These are useless. Don't bother with them. The only one in here that's of any value is this one here, and it says flow track right at the top. It simply talks about what the different items are within it that you can measure. Doesn't really, it's not much of a how-to guide, but it's still in the box. This is going to be your next most important item here. And you can see it's so cleverly named, Vigileo Cables Don't Throw Away. What makes this important is this is actually two separate cables that are hooked together. Why, the reason why you need it is this here. So these two cables, one's green, one's gray. This green one is specifically designed to hook to the flow track tubing. This gray one also hooks onto the flow track tubing, but the ends are what makes the difference. This red one plugs into our bedside monitors just like any other um, art line cable would. So that's the point of these two. This green one though, the green one is what goes into the back of the Vigileo and allows you to get the cardiac output monitoring. So yes, once you hook the flow track up, you hook it to the Vigileo, you'll have your basic art line waveforms that you would see on the bedside monitor, as well as cardiac output monitoring. So that's what makes this thing so cool. Last but not least, you are going to need flow track tubing. Now, kick this around, because let's be honest, that's what we all look at anyway. Flow track tubing, as you can tell, you've got the green, you've got the red. Red is what's going to go to our bedside monitor. Green is what's going to go to the Vigileo itself. This is the same transducer that we normally use. Um, and it's got the same pigtail, except this one works way better. It actually flows really well. It pulls really easy. This thing's pretty awesome. Um, the rest of this is the same. Currently, this does not have the um, blood sampling the same way our other tubing does. As we run through the supply, I promise the new ones that we buy will be upgraded to have that ability. But for now, it's what we got. All right, other things that are in this box, I'm just going to mention, um, just so you know what they are. This guy here. It's got this big old plastic brick on it. Um, this is for the other capability that the Vigileo has, which is called SVO2 monitoring. V is in Venus. The Vigileo has a capability of measuring a constant um, oxygen blood gas um, through the Venus side. That's what this piece does. Very, very expensive. Don't throw it away. Don't lose it. Just leave it in the box. That's why I'm telling you, just leave it in the box. Yes, I've asked the doctors. There's no chance we're going to be testing that anytime soon. Um, there's a few other bricks and cables in here. You don't need to worry about them. Just what I go over today is what matters. The Vigileo, your flow track tubing, cord, and power. All right, so let's set this guy up. And yes, this is going to be running real time. So this is about what it's going to look like in real life, just to warn you. So I already have some of the flow track tubing set up over here on the right. It's just, or my left. Uh, it's just like you would normally set up any art line tubing. You've got your fluid for the pressure bag. What did you do? You spiked it, you burped it. When you prime this flow track tubing for the first time, the pressure bag is deflated. It's just a gravity flush. It works really well though. This pigtail, it's much, much better. Um, you'll do your usual stuff when you're doing your flushing. You'll pop your caps off. You'll swap them out for like nice sterile blue ones instead. And then of course you'll flush through and your secondary one here you'll get hit. Um, so once you've done that, then you'll inflate your bag to 300. And that's right, you guys get to sit here and watch me inflate the bag. Always make sure you lock that off. Okay, so you've got that filled. 
you've got it pre-primed. Now all you need to do is run it one more time, get the last bit of the fluid out before you even hook it up to the patient. Now that you've done a pressurized flush to try and get all the little bits of air out, um, we need to start hooking it up, right? So we'll assume the physician has completed what they're doing. If you want to kind of look at the overall setup here, um, we're going to have this plugged in. Right now, I have the Vigileo on a bedside table because that's what works best. Um, in reality, that's probably what we'll do in, for patient care. You'll just have it off to the side or wherever is convenient. Um, so I've got him plugged in. This has been primed. Patient's got his art line in or her art line and the physician hooked them up. I've got my setup over here. So we'll dig out your two cables. We'll get them all hooked up. And of course you could potentially do this even before it gets hooked up to the patient. But if you look at the flow track tubing, you'll see you've got the two tails. So gray and red go together, green and green go together. Um, your red tube, or sorry, your red cord will hook to your bedside monitor just like always. You can plug it into the X2 or to a brick on the back, whatever's more convenient. But then on the Vigileo itself, we'll look at the back of this and I'll show you what's going on here. So this side here with the red, um, it also has this weird little doohickey sticking out. This is all for the SVO2 monitoring. You're not going to use it. Don't worry about it. What matters to you is this lovely green circle. So your flow track cord um, only fits in one way, so you may have to spin it a little bit to get it to fit. Once it locks in, really easy. If you do need to remove it, um, it has this gray collar right here. If you just pull back on it, that's how you pop it loose. All right, so now that we have that all locked in place, I'm going to lean in and hopefully the microphone can pick up on this because it's really fun. And so I just want to frame this up. That's right, sounds just like a Game Boy. So I'm going to go through the starting settings. And All right, so clear patient data profiles, I'm going to say yes. Now this dial on the side is how you navigate through this. And so it's clearing out patient data, and now it wants me to put everything in. Gender, age, height, and weight. It absolutely needs that information in order to do the calculations. We're going to keep this really easy. When I push the button, it'll select whatever is highlighted. And so now I just turn the dial to choose between female or male. And then once I hit it, <coughs> it automatically jumps to the next. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so age. Let's do something really easy. Let's make them 70 years old. It will do centimeters or inches for your height. We'll choose inches and we'll just go 70 inches tall. For a weight, let's do kilograms. And oh, let me go back one. And we will do kilograms and we'll do 70 for that as well. So 70 years old, 70 inches tall, 70 kilograms in weight. You'll notice it automatically converts for you. Um, all the measurements that this does for cardiac output, cardiac index, it's all in metric, so just accept that. Um, and then it automatically does body surface area for you. Once I have all that finished, I hit continue, and this is your load screen. There's no information on here, and there won't be until it actually has a pressure wave going through it. Um, but before we get to that, before we use any art line, what do we need to do? We need to zero it. So um, currently, I'm just going to walk you through the way the screen works real quick. The dial is how, how you navigate it. It's not a touch screen. It doesn't care. So as I turn this dial, you'll see how different boxes will highlight throughout. So I pick this one in the upper right corner. It says CI for cardiac index. And I hit my button, and that opens it up. And now I have a list of different things I can do. Most important is zero arterial pressure. And now it's waiting for me to zero it just like I normally would. Well, I have the Vigileo on, but I don't have my bedside monitor yet. So I'm going to kick my monitor on. And I'll just say it's a new patient. Close that. I'm going to turn my alarms. Yep, I'm going to turn my alarms off real quick. 
That way it's not chirping at us while we do this. Okay. Uh, and right now my art line has nothing. So I'll do my zero button up on my monitor like I always would. And I have my Vigileo set up to zero out as well. Over here, we do just like we always would. Yes, by the way, this is set up correctly. The stopcock goes above the flush. Um, and this is leveled to the flebostatic axis of the patient. Turn it off to the patient. Open this up. Keep it nice and sterile. Give a little flush here. Make sure it's a solid column of water coming out. And then I can actually do both simultaneously or I can do one at a time. Doesn't really matter. Um, but I'll go ahead and zero out my Vigileo. And it does it instantaneously. It takes it no time at all. Now up here on my monitor, since this says art line, I'm going to zero art. We'll wait for the second beep. There's the second chirp. There we go, all good. So I'll put my cap back on and I'll hit exit on my Vigileo. And of course on your bedside monitor, you see how that pressure's climbing higher and higher. In fact, it should hit almost 300 because that's the pressure coming from the bag. As soon as I open my stopcock back open so that it's free flow, you'll see my patient's blood pressure come down. In order to make all this work, I'm just telling you guys, you guys have seen me use my pressure bag before to develop, to make a uh, waveform on here. This is set to about mm, 60, 65. That's gonna be my map for all of this that we're doing today. Um, but I'm gonna demonstrate the difference in blood pressures and heart rates and how the Vigileo picks up on that. All right, so. All right, so the Vigileo itself. Uh, I'm gonna walk through the different screens on it here before we do anything else. Uh, currently I have this upper corner selected and on the screen you essentially have a graph. If you look at the timestamps across here, it's every five minutes. Um, and then of course you have your clock in the bottom corner which is keeping good time. If I wanna navigate these screens, I simply scroll through them. And in fact, you can mess with the time. There's even an additional one down here. In this upper left corner where it says SCVO2, that is again that different type of monitoring that we're not gonna worry about today. Just letting you know it's there, ignore it. Now what's really cool, this is the power button up here that I'd hit beforehand, but then there's this picture of two screens essentially switching places. When I hit that, if you'll notice the change, instead of having a graphical form, I have something a lot more akin to our bedside monitors. It just flashes up a number. This is dynamic. It takes about 40 seconds to spool up and then updates every 20 seconds after that. Really, really cool stuff. Um, I can change any one of these boxes to be a different reading, but if you look at the way it is now, I have cardiac index in the corner, cardiac output, stroke volume. Um, I've got your uh, stroke volume index. Anytime you have index on there, it's based on your body surface area. It's how you can compare a sumo wrestler to a ballerina, you know? They may have very different cardiac outputs, but the index is different because of, well, sorry, the index is corrected for their size. Uh, stroke volume variation, uh, systemic vascular resistance is able to be calculated on here, all the cool stuff. If I hit the screen one more time, you can have this more uh, flow sheet or tabular view that will then give you readings every minute, honestly. These can be adjusted to be tighter. You just kind of have to fiddle around with it to do that, like point in case. Um, if I click on the screen. Currently I have display interval as one minute. I can up that to every 60 minutes. So if I just want my hourly results, now I have seven, nine, sorry, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. I'm gonna leave this at a minute simply because we're not gonna be doing this for all that long. And then I just highlight return and back the way we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take us back to this screen. Currently it says cardiac index. I wanna use cardiac output for today. So I've selected parameter. Currently index is what's highlighted. I'm gonna switch that to output. And now you'll see this says cardiac output and these numbers have been changed to cardiac output as well. All right, so let's get a waveform. I'm going to have you take a look at my screen real quick. I'm gonna pause it for a second. 
OK, so you can see I've got a map of 64. That's just because of my pressure bag. But I'm going to go ahead and give us a blood pressure now. And for those of you who sat through classes with me, you're familiar with this. Let's give a really good blood pressure. So in the upper right there, you can see I've got a pulse in the one teens-ish, pressures of 150s over 70s, maps of the 95, pretty solid. Uh, of course, my waveform looks awful because I haven't done the optimum scale yet. So in order to fix that, I'm just going to touch and change those out. See how bad my blood pressure changes doing this one-handed for a second. There we go. So now that we've got optimum scale, we're tachycardic. We've got a good blood pressure. And now if you look at your Vigileo, I won't change the blood pressure, but just look at what the Vigileo numbers are reading. I've got a heart rate above 100. I've got blood pressures anywhere between 130s to one, yeah, 140s. We'll just call it that. And so now you've got cardiac output, cardiac index, stroke volume variation, stroke volume. All that good stuff is in there. I'm going to do this for about just another minute so you can watch it update once or twice. All right, so now I'm going to slow down our heart rate. probably about 50, 60 beats a minute. Maintained blood pressure, just changed heart rate. And we'll do this for about a minute or so and see how our numbers change. Now the goal of today is not to go over all the calculations, it's not even to explain how the measurements are done necessarily. It's just to make you familiar with the device and how the numbers can change. Um, we'll do separate education or anyone who's taking echo can walk through and really put this to the test. So my blood pressure is 139 over 64. My heart rate is 58. I've been holding this for the last minute or so and you can see how drastically that's changed your cardiac output and cardiac index. Now let's make them tachycardic with a low blood pressure. Right now I've got a heart rate of 120, 90 over 64. I'll just maintain that for a minute. Ooh, 130s, blood pressure of 86 over 64. One forties, seventies over forties. Actually, dropped our map a little bit down into the mid forties now, and we're still tachycardic. And you can see how those look a little bit better, but that's mostly because of my tachycardia. My cardiac index is still on the low side though, at two point one. And that's the idea. Um, and if you saw a patient with a heart rate in the 130s, pressure of 60 over 20, MAP of 42, yeah, you're going to be treating them, absolutely. But now I'm going to start squeezing like we gave them a big old shot of Levofed. They're still tachycardic, but now I've got their pressure up in the 110s, 120s. Let's say they're really responsive to the opening dose. My MAP is now getting up there, oops, 60. My diastolic's pretty awful, but that's because I changed a few things. But now we're tachycardic, our blood pressure's decent, and hopefully after a little bit on the Vigileo, check that out. By really cranking up things, 
really increasing our stroke volume. It's up to 82 now. You can see how that cardiac output just jumped through the ceiling. And so you can see how, yeah, we can watch blood pressures to manage things, but using cardiac output, cardiac index, things of that nature are going to be a lot more sensitive, and that's the idea. All right, so that's enough data. Let's take a look at the Vigileo itself, and we're going to go through the information that we've just collected. Now, of course, this is the live time screen, 20 second delay for anything to post. Um, once it realizes that our patient now no longer has a blood pressure, it's going to start alarming, and we'll give it time to do that. But what I want to do is change our screen. And so now you have this flow sheet across here, to which I have it every so many seconds, or every minute, if you just saw this little moon change from it was almost full to now it's blank, that's actually your timer. And you see how it just got a sliver right there. That's how long it takes till the next update of information. But as you look through here, I've got my different cardiac outputs, which kind of makes sense. I was doing good, doing good. Then I really kind of fell out a little bit. You can see how my stroke volumes decreased, um, but I was able to maybe get my cardiac outputs up a bit. Not too bad for being zoomed in every minute. Um, but if I change to my graphical display, now you really get an idea of how my cardiac output was way, way up here, dropped off like a rock, kind of came up a little bit when I, you know, quote unquote, gave him levofed. So fun ways that we can drill down. Currently, this is five minute intervals, and I really can't tighten it down any more than that, so I apologize. But what we can do is use this line function that's over here. Once I press that button, you get a line on the screen. The X essentially represents a single second. So as I move the dial, I'm moving one second across the screen, or even less actually. If you look across the bottom here, this line is at 13, 51, and zero seconds. As I crank it back further, you'll see now I'm at 13, 50, and 20 seconds. If I wanna go faster, I hit the button, now I'm moving in intervals of 10, and I can really jump around pretty fast. Um, and I can go even faster. Let's say we did this for 24 hours. You can move in intervals of 60, which is pretty massive. Anyway, so back to the one. So at this very second, 13, 50, and zero seconds, um, you see right up here in the corner, it says, Cardiac output 42 point, or sorry, 4.2 at that exact moment. If I scroll back a few more seconds, let it rest here at my absolute worst time, you'll see that this number here, this 2.1, 2.1 is exactly the best cardiac, or is that cardiac output for this little moment here. This 13, 50, and 59, that was that very last one, the larger endpoint on the screen. So cardiac output, this is my last one recorded, but I use this line to move back and forth across this graphical display to determine that, yeah, cardiac output was 2.1 at that moment, but I scroll forward after I started the Leva Fed, and now it reads 4.0. What if the doc wants to know the cardiac index instead of cardiac output? Well, we get rid of our line, we scroll up here to this corner, select it, go down to parameters, cardiac index, return. Now you'll see this displays cardiac index, and that's what this graph represents. So I'll hit my line. That's a little slow, so I'll go in tens. And you'll see right here, cardiac index only goes between four and two. I can't even see my bottom values. So one of those things I can do is get out of this. I'm going to select this again. And we are going to do derived value calculator. Nope, nope, that's not the one I want. Let's go back. I want, ah, oh, trend setup. That's what I wanted. In trend setup, you have the ability to set your alarm parameters, but also what you see on display. And so I'm going to take this and roll it all the way down to zero. And return out. 
And so now you'll see that my graphical display goes all the way down to zero, so I can see where that bottom point was. So now if I take my line, we go by tens, I can scroll through and catch that information and be able to display it just like I could with the other. And see 3.1, etc. That um, task works the same for all of the parameters that we can get off of this art line. Um, nope, it won't export a darn thing, um, but hey, at least your blood pressure readings can come through to your Philips monitor, so then that way you can import them that way. Um, yes, the charting system has a space for all of this information. We'll just have to put those lines in and enter them in by hand. Um, we'll just have to work out how often the doc wants them recorded and etc. But that's the Vigileo in a nutshell. More to come as you ask more questions. <laughs>